Okay, so the police are called to the scene of an incident, and you know that the police were wearing body cameras. Now, after this incident is over, what you want to do is you want to request the associated body camera footage uh, from the police officers. How do you do this? You know that you don't have a pending case. Uh, you know that there's no criminal case. You know that there's no civil lawsuit, at least that is currently pending. But you want to be able to access this body camera footage, uh, likely because maybe you you are anticipating filing a lawsuit, or it could be useful to you in some other regard. How do you request body camera footage when you're just simply a private citizen? So I am criminal defense attorney Hannah Kentoye, and um, if you haven't seen my previous videos on requesting body camera footage, uh, I mentioned that there are usually three circumstances where people will want to access body camera footage. One is if you are associated with a criminal case, so basically you're criminally charged. Two is if you have a pending civil lawsuit of any kind. And then the third is there's no pending case, no pending lawsuit, but you're seeking to obtain body camera footage because it's going to be helpful to you in some way shape or form or it may be a matter of public concern and you want to access that body camera footage how do you do that so usually when you are uh, requesting body camera footage it's going to depend on what the rules and what the policies are uh, from the police department that recorded the footage so again this is going to vary by state by city by county uh, depending on where you're located now uh, oftentimes police departments will have their own policy for how people can access body camera footage uh, usually you may have to fill out some type of internal paperwork um, that they may either have on their website or they may have you come in in person to make that request for the body camera footage now uh, let's say you uh, request the footage and they deny you then there is another way that you can likely request that same footage and it's called a FOIA request that's F-O-I-A stands for Freedom of Information Act and what it essentially means is that um, there should be a level of transparency between the government and citizens of the nation uh, and uh, it should be uh, such that individuals who request government records should be able to access it right if you're of course if you're paying taxes why are you not permitted to access certain government records and so that's essentially what FOIA governs uh, the ability to access uh, various documents or records that are associated with government agencies if you are denied after you request directly from the police department uh, access to the body camera footage you can likely file a FOIA request now um, every state may call it something different but there are usually going to be uh, a local body of laws that uh, govern access to public records uh, including um, body camera footage uh, some states actually have their own laws that govern access to body camera footage so that's likely going to be the first place that you look uh, what does the law say about access to body camera footage now if there's no law in that regard then you want to look to what the police department says with respect to how they provide access to body camera footage and then third uh, if uh, there is no particular uh, rule or policy with the police department then you want to likely consider making a FOIA request now once you access the body camera footage or once you are permitted to access the body camera footage uh, there may be some limitations in place uh, governing who can see the body camera footage so obviously if you are the person that's captured in the body camera footage there's going to be a significant likelihood that you can access or view that footage uh, maybe if you're a close friend or family member um, that may not be in the footage uh, then you may be also able to access that footage as well. Uh, if you have some type of related interest in that footage, you know, let's say um, your children, of course, are in the footage, you're likely also going to uh, be able to access it. Or let's say you're the manager of a business and the police came in for a particular reason and you were not there and you want to access the footage. That may be another reason where you may be permitted to access that body camera footage. Now, once you're at a place where you are permitted to access the body camera footage, then you want to see if there are any limitations in you actually being able to take that footage home with you. Now, chances are, 
you're likely not going to be able to obtain a copy of the footage. But what may be uh, permissible is your ability to go to the police department and view that footage. Um, there may be an ability to request that you maybe obtain a redacted version of the footage, meaning that um, they uh, maybe blur out or beep out uh, dates of births uh, or remove you know, social security numbers and um, private information that is provided to a police officer. So keep in mind, if a police officer is coming to the scene, they're gonna get the full names and date of births of people. They're gonna get their phone numbers. Um, they're going to get uh, various other contact information, maybe email addresses, uh, physical addresses. They're going to want to see a copy of your ID. And so when, a when an officer is looking at your ID, obviously it's going to be somewhere in the center of their chest in the direct line of sight of the body camera. And so that is why there's a lot of personal and private information on body cams. And um, it's not always feasible for anybody or just anybody and everybody to access it. So um, something to really keep in mind. So um, going back to what I was mentioning, uh, you're, once you're permitted to access body camera footage, and then once you're permitted to view the body camera footage, um, then you also want to uh, look at um, how that information or how that uh, how that footage is going to be helpful to you. You know, do you want to uh, use that information to file a lawsuit? If that is the case, you may want to see if you can bring an attorney with you to view the footage uh, because the footage may be of no use to just you or you may not know what your legal claims could be in court if you view that footage. But um, oftentimes, sometimes <laughs> people are scared of attorneys. You know, they think that they, they are the ones that are gonna get sued. So sometimes when you do mention that you wanna bring an attorney, um, you may get some pushback. So so just keep that, keep that in mind. You may have to jump through quite a bit of hoops, but ultimately, if you are able to get to the footage, bring a pen and paper with you if you are permitted to actually write down notes on what you're able to see. I highly doubt that you'd be able to bring, for instance, like a cell phone or any other type of device where you can record what is happening because then they would have just given you a copy of the footage. So um, if there's any way that you can uh, memorialize what you have seen, that will um, likely be helpful to you. So uh, I hope that provides some additional insight on how how people are able to access body camera footage. If you haven't seen uh, my previous two videos on how to access uh, body cam footage in other types of situations, criminal cases and civil cases, uh, feel free to take a look at, uh, at those videos. And as always, uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to message me here or on my website, mydclaw.com, and I'm always happy to chat with you further. Uh, as always, stay safe, and I will talk to you soon.